This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and here's something you don't see every day. It's a BlackBerry. This is the BlackBerry Motion, which is just now become available in the United States. It's been out in Canada, which is BlackBerry's home turf for a while now, and available in Europe as well. So remember the key one? This was the keyboard version. For those of you who still haven't weaned yourself off of hardware keyboards, well, now this is the big old slab, modern touchscreen kind of phone for those of you who are kind of moving on and that sort of thing. And nowadays, I don't think BlackBerry phones are so much for those of you who are still remembering the glory days of the BlackBerry Bold. Granted, some of you are still out there, but times have changed, uh, millennials have taken over, and they really don't remember the Bold or the Curve so much. But what they can appreciate about this phone is really solid build quality, a sensible price. It's $449 on lock, no contract, no nothing. And a decent set of specs on here, honestly, and some good software customizations that are geared towards business and productivity more than anything else. This isn't something that goes up against the Samsung Galaxy S8 or even the OnePlus 5 or 5T, which are similarly priced, but those are really more consumer-oriented with fancy cameras and all that sort of thing. Another nice, refreshing thing about this is, well, that sturdiness goes right to the fact that there's no frou-frou all glass back. You don't have to pamper this phone so much. You got the faux carbon fiber finish on here. Of course, the draw back means that there's no wireless charging either because that does require something like a glass back but there's actually a lot to like it's a 5.5 inch ips display so it's a big screen phone same size as the one plus five or an iphone 8 plus full hd decent quality here a lot more to talk about we're gonna look at it now so first things first this is a gsm unlocked phone so if you're on T-Mobile, AT&T, Cricket, any one of the offshoot GSM carriers or overseas on GSM, this is the phone for you. We have the Model 100-2, which is for North and South America. Now, if you're on Sprint or Verizon, this isn't the phone for you. In the United States, no carrier has said that they're going to pick this up so far anyway. If you go to BlackBerry's home turf in Canada, several carriers are carrying it. And of course, it's also available in Europe too. The price at $449 is, you know, it's it's very palatable compared to today's insane eight and nine hundred dollar smartphones and it is kind of that you know i've been there done that android users phone you love android you're a power user but you've gone with the high-end flagships the prices are getting insane you just want something that looks a little different is pretty solidly built pretty secure all that sort of thing well it has its appeal now this is made by blackberry mobile so blackberry mobile is actually tcl communications they also sell alcatel branded phones and they also sell tvs under the tcl label so they license the blackberry brand name and they're using that same blackberry customized android customized rather blackberry operating system that we've seen on blackberry's own phones it runs Android 7.1.2 Nugget. We don't know when Oreo is coming here. And like I said, you can see on we've got all sorts of stuff going on here with BlackBerry, including the BBM. I don't know how many people are really still into BBM messaging anymore. BlackBerry Hub, which is a unified inbox, which can be nice, but can also be a little bit overwhelming because you've got a whole lot of, well, social networking, emails, all sorts of things pouring into there at the same time. You've got DTEC, which is a pretty decent application that reminds you about all the possible security settings you should be concerned about on the phone, permissions, all that sort of thing. I like that feature actually pretty well. There's also BlackBerry's own customized keyboard, which I like a lot actually. Big keys, nice. There are some strange things like the new privacy shade, so you can see pretty much just what's under your finger. It's a little too James Bond for me, but you get the idea here. Uh, the customizations are all about that and about enhancing the PIM applications, more for business users and for people who just really want to get things done quickly with their calendar, with their email notifications, all of that sort of thing. There's not no multimedia thing going on here. There's no uh, fancy multimedia features or anything like that. It's just your basics. The phone supports voice over LTE and Wi-Fi calling. You can see the Wi-Fi calling indicator on screen right here. We have a T-Mobile SIM in here at the moment. It has NFC, the usual dual band Wi-Fi, 802.11ac, Bluetooth 4.2. So yeah, pretty standard stuff there. The phone has a full HD LCD display, and it's decent enough looking. I mean, that's plenty enough pixel density, honestly. There are plenty of people using an iPhone 8 Plus at that resolution, or, you know, a OnePlus 5, and they're happy enough with it. I have no complaints about it. It's decently bright. You can view it outside. Uh, viewing angles are pretty fine on it, too. It looks sharp. It's colorful. It gets the job done. It's not going to wow you like the nicest of OLED displays, but it's perfectly fine. And again, at this price point, that's fair. 
Being a BlackBerry, it has to have a notification LED, of course. You have a white LED. It can do vibration. It can do auditory alerts, that is, make noises at you as well. There's a convenience key on the side here. It has a texture kind of neural thing going on. You might confuse that with the home button. Certainly them being on the same side is a little confusing, I suppose. No matter what, it could be a little bit confusing, but it's the one with the texture. You'll, you'll get used to it soon enough if you actually own and use the phone. Your volume controls are over here, no surprises. And on the other side, you've got your SIM card carrier and micro SD card carrier, and it can use cards up to 256 gigs in capacity. It has 32 gigs of internal storage and four gigs of RAM. So that's one gig more than, of RAM than the BlackBerry Key One. On the bottom here, we have a USB-C charging port. It does support USB on the go. And looky, a headphone jack, hey. And this is where the thoroughly average sounding speaker fires from back here. The whole thing, the metal frame on this, the, the interesting design, the curves and all that sort of thing. I like it a lot. I'm, I like carbon fiber, I admit. I'm a girl racer kind of person, so that's a neat touch. And beyond that, it's also very grippy. It's pretty practical. And it's not the lightest phone. It's 157 grams, so anything that makes it easier to keep in hand is appreciated. BlackBerry does include some headphones in the box, little spaghetti-style headphones there to go with your genuine headphone jack. We got a fingerprint scanner up front, which is a clicky button. It's a clicky home button. And we have capacitive buttons for back and home, old fashioned a little bit there. We have the chin arrangement and all that sort of thing. Again, it's not going for the ooh, ah, bezel -less looks and all that sort of thing. It's kind of practical, functional, and usable, though I do find that I do hit these by accident every so often. Speaking of the customization, see, this is pretty neat. You have your choice of three different looks for multitasking. I kind of like this one that it does right here, but you can have the typical rolling list that Android does or just plain old tiles, whatever you like on that. This has a Snapdragon 625 octa-core CPU. That's a mid-range CPU, which is befitting the price, I suppose, there. And the scores are as you would expect. It's about mid-range performance there. And there's our graphics test performance. In use, it feels very responsive. It feels fast, and generally, BlackBerry mobile phones do. They have a very lightweight experience in terms of what they're doing with the user interface here. So everything is zippy. And, you know, you can play some games on here. I've got Need for Speed playing there, and it, it's adequate for the, for the task. Now, if you're a total multimedia maven, if you want to do VR and wear goggles with this phone, this isn't going to be the one for you. But for most people, I think it would get the job done just fine. Camera has an 8 megapixel front selfie camera f2.2 lens, no doubt geared towards business communications and video, but whatever you want to use it for. And a rear 12 megapixel camera with an f2.0 lens, a lot like the Key One. It's an okay camera. The software here is pretty intuitive. You've got your aspect ratio, your HDR modes, all that sort of thing. You're not going to get OIS on here, optical image stabilization, but you get software and sta stabilization. Unless you're shooting 4K at 30 frames per second, then like many phones, you don't. So you have to drop it down to full HD if you want. So that part's fine, but the, the images themselves, it does best in outdoor lighting, honestly, even outdoor lighting. Our little Buddha friend here, he looks absolutely fine. This looks pretty nice, even though there's a good amount of dynamic range. But once you start, you'll notice the house is whiting out here an awful lot, though. It has a lot of problems with that. Indoor shot, lots of barrel distortion on the lens. Again, you know, it's the focus is not photography here. A little kitty action. Oh my word, look at this. This is an indoor shot and there's a little bit of sun coming through and it has just overexposed the poor critter quite a lot. So you get the idea. It's an okay camera. Go for even lighting though for your, your best bet with this one. Perhaps the biggest selling point is battery life here. This is a humongous 4,000 milliamp battery. You combine that with the mid-range CPU and just a full HD display and well, you've got battery life that is indeed phenomenal. It just goes for, for me, I, I went two days on a charge with this with moderate use, absolutely no problem at all. It's, it's wow, it brings back the good old days when phones actually lasted more than seven hours, right? So that's the BlackBerry Motion. And the selling points on this are pretty good. Uh, number one, for the Android enthusiast who's been there, done that with all sorts of phones, doesn't want to pay six to eight hundred or more dollars for a phone. This has a sensible price tag. It's solidly built and no delicate glass back on here. Battery life is phenomenal. You've got a huge battery, 4,000 milliamps on this. It's unlocked, so you can use it with any carrier. It's not so great if you're on Sprint or Verizon, a CDMA carrier, but for GSM, you know, and you get the Wi-Fi calling the voice over LT, and you get those security customizations in the DTEC app to help you keep your mind on security and keep your data a little bit more safe. So there you have it. It's the BlackBerry Motion.
I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.